Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is Smith number and it is a medium level problem. So again, we have a problem similar to see of rat of things, just a slight modification of it. So if you did watch yesterday's videos and if you did practice the problem and you considered some other resources as well, so by now I believe you must be already familiar with what is a sieve and how does it actually work. Now we are going to look at a very interesting application of sieve and uh, even I recently uh, learned about it and uh, not so long ago and uh, it's very useful in sorting problems. So let us discuss what the problem says. We have been given a number n and our task is to find out whether this is a Smith number or not. And a Smith number is defined as a composite number whose sum of digits is equal to the sum of digits of its prime factors. Right. So basically, uh, let's say this particular example 3, 7 and 8. Its sum of digits is going to be 3 plus 7 plus 8 that is uh, 1018. Right. Now its prime factors are 2, 3, 3, 3 and 7. Right. So if you multiply all of these numbers, you are going to get 378. So if I sum all of these values, this is going to be 9, this is 9, this is uh, 11 after adding these two values. So let me just write it properly 2 plus 9 is equal to 11 and 11 plus 7 is equal to 18 as well. So you see that uh, the sum in both the cases is the same. Now let's say one of the prime factors is 13 then you cannot take 13 directly you will have to take the sum of digits and that is 4. Right. So this is one thing that you should know that the problem is same. Now how do we uh, find out the answer using C in this particular problem. Now you must have observed that there are actually two parts of this particular question. One is just calculating the sum of digits of the plane number and the other one is finding the prime factors of this particular number. Right. So the first one that is the sum of the digits is pretty straightforward. You can just uh, add the sum one by one. This was also a problem today a few days before in which we had to find the sum of the digits. Now let us see how we can use a sieve to find the sum of the digits. Let's say if I have an array like this. So each of these values are let us say in this is index 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Let us say all of the values are initially infinity. So I can write it 1 e 9 or let me just write it infinity and I am just going to take this. It is also infinity. And also this one. So, I am just trying to fill out infinity in all the places. Let us say now I have infinity at all the places and uh, this is this should not be here. Right. So, now I traverse from left to right. But this time only going instead of only going till root n in the previous problem while finding c of eratosthenes, I was only going till root n. I would rather try to go till the all numbers n. So the goal of the sieve is the different is a little bit different now. So the earlier the goal was to find at least one prime factor. Right. I repeat at least one prime factor, and that is why we only go till root n. But now our goal is, is a little bit different. Let's say I have a sieve. At sieve of i, I will store a certain value. So let us say that value is going to be the smallest prime number which divides i. Right. So this is my goal now. At each position i, I have to store the smallest prime number which divides the current index i. So, if I have to calculate for all the indexes i, then this is one thing for sure that I will have to traverse through the whole size of the array or my sieve, right. So, the very first thing is instead of only going till root n, our outer loop will go till n because we have to set some value for each of the i indexes, right. Although there is a way, uh, you can also go till root n, but that is absolutely not required and uh, it is very easy to follow this particular method. The other method will also work. It is just that you will have to take care a couple of edge cases of, right. So, 
let's go ahead with this particular method i start from the left i encounter an infinity that means that my current number is a prime number if my current number is a prime number that means i can start marking its multiples as non prime or i can start start marking its multiples as the multiple of 2 so what i am basically trying to say is i will go to 4 first of all i'll I am at two position two, so the smallest prime number that is dividing two is two itself. Then I will go to four and I'll update this value as two because now the smallest prime number dividing four is two. Then I'll go to six. I'll update as two. This is also two. This is also two, and then twelve two. So basically, what you saw was I went to all the multiples of two and told them that two is your divisor, and hence at position i, I will know what is the smallest prime divisor of the current number i. similarly when i go to 3 i encounter that this is going to be a infinity so i mark it as 3 first of all because the divisor of 3 is 3 itself and i go to position 6 but i see that 2 is already marked there and i want the smallest prime divisor so when i take the minimum of 2 comma 3 then it is not going to change so i go to the next position that is 9 and then i update it as 3 then i go to the next position that is 12 and again there is 2 present so i don't need to update it so again i will go to the next infinity value that is 5 I'm going to erase it. So let's say I, I, if I write five here, then I go to the next multiple that is two. But two is already marked. Uh, this particular number ten is already marked because there is two. When I take the minimum of two comma five, this is going to give me two itself. So I'm not going to change the particular value. So basically, what is happening is at all the positions, i, I'm going to store the smallest prime number which divides i. Right. Now let's say I want to do the prime factorization. Let's say I am at position n, right? I want to do the prime factorization of n. I know that c of i will contain its divisor. So let's say that divisor is x. Let's say c of n is equal to x, right? So now what I'll do is I'll add x to my answer and make n is equal to n by x. Now I have to find c of n by x, and let's say this is x dash. Now what I'll do? I'll divide n by x divided by x dash, and I'll find my next value. And again, I'll add x dash to my sum. Right. So this is how I can continue this process. Each time I'll get a divisor of the current number, and I will reach eventually reach one. And this is when I should break out of the uh, prime factorization. Right. So this is a very simple application of sieve. At each position i, I just want to store the smallest prime number which divides i. in the normal sieve i'll tell you what is the difference is the first difference is that we were only storing true or false we were not storing any specific values in the normal sieve and the second difference is instead of going till root 10 we are just going to go to all the numbers because for each index i we want to set some value right so that is why we are going to to all the numbers so that is it for this particular explanation let me just quickly go through the code and you will understand all of it so this is my function and this will be very useful to me in this particular problem which is going to calculate the digit sum and uh, this is nothing but basically if my current number is n i am going to take its last digit and add it to my answer value so i made a video on this problem of the day a couple of days earlier and some people said that uh, uh, it is it would be better if i explain this part on this particular uh, board with a dry run so let me quickly explain this let's say i have a number 3 25 right and uh, I want to find the sum of the digits. So what I'll do, I'll first of all calculate the value of n mod 10, and this is in this particular case it is going to give me 5, right? So I add sum plus is equals to n mod 10, right? In this case it is going to give me 5, and 5 will be added to my answer. Now I will divide n by 10. So 325 will be 32.5 when I divide by 10. But since it is integer division. So 32 will be remaining only, right? Now I have 32. So when I do 32 mod 10, it is going to give me 2. So now 2 will be get added to my answer. Again, 32 divided by 10 is going to give me 3 only. So the same process with 3 mod 10, it is going to give me 3, and 3 will be added to my answer. So this is how it basically works. It's very simple. It's not very difficult to understand. So that is exactly the same thing I have done here. While n, that means while n is greater than 0, I'm going to add n mod 10 to my answer. And then divide n by 10, and then finally return my answer value. Now inside this Smith function, I have my sieve, which is of size n plus one, and I have initialized everything with a very big value, which is infinity. Right? I'm starting with index two, and I'm going till less than n plus one, 
and if c of i is equals to is equals to 1 e 9 that means the current number is a prime number and it has not been affected by any other number that is when i mark c of i as i because the number will be dividing itself now for all the other multiples i am going to set c of j as minimum of c of j comma i it means i'm just trying to store the minimum value right so at each position i i'll have its smallest prime divisor now if c of n is equals to n if the number is dividing itself and there is no other divisor other than n that means it is a prime number and we have to return 0 because the first line of the smith number is a smith number is a composite number right so all the prime numbers should return 0 now i have my sum a and sum b so sum b is just going to store the digit sum and sum a is going to store the digit sum of the prime dividers so while n is greater than 1 i am just going to add digit sum of c of n and then divide n by c of n right so basically c for the current number n c of n is going to contain its smallest prime divisor i add the digit sum of that prime divisor to my sum a and then divide n by that particular prime divisor so at the end i just have to return sum a is equal to is equal to sum b that means if both of them are equal it is going to return true otherwise it is going to return false so let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works so you see it passes all the test cases and uh, the solutions is correct i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems so that is it for today till the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye